Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live video. So in this one here, I want to talk about the finale. This isn't going to be my breakdown of the episode. I'm not going to go through every single moment and break everything down like I normally do. I'll do that video later on today, I guess, because it is in the middle of the night. I just need to get some sleep because I'm so, so tired. I did a pretty long stream, uh, streaming some Minecraft and all that on Twitch and obviously reacting to the episode and all that. So there is a lot of that going on, but I, I uh, again, I wanted to do a reaction here because a lot of you guys are waiting for it. So I wanted to just do a, a reaction here, uh, giving my thoughts on the episode, just general thoughts and everything and an overall review. And then tomorrow I will do my breakdown of everything. And then I'll talk about, um, I guess before you get into that, I, I do want to say that this video will contain spoilers for the episode. So I just want you guys to know that this will contain spoilers for the finale for the ending, like everything that's going to happen here in the finale. All right. So, um, yeah. And then tomorrow I, I will also do a season two video on how they could actually do that. Certain things that they could actually focus on. So, um, yeah, we'll get into that there. But the first thing is, uh, what are my thoughts originally just like coming out of this episode? I feel disappointment. That's just how I feel. I actually feel very, very disappointed. And it's not because of just like where the story ended up, but my main criticism here is it felt rushed. Yeah, like it, it, there's there was so much hype for so much of the story, for so much of of the CRM, for so much of a lot of just what they have built up for years and years and years, for all of it to end in one episode. Honestly, I was shocked and stunned by everything I was seeing. It was just like, wait, what is going on right now? It was way too fast. Like, honestly, way too fast. And I thought there was going to be a lot more story to the CRM that for some reason, a lot of it ended just like this. And it, it's such a disappointment to, and th again, this is why I'm hoping that there is more to the CRM, that there's actually more aspects to the story here. And because of where they where they ended, and we'll talk about that in a second here. But I just think that in terms of how they handled the CRM story overall, I wasn't a fan of it. Major General Beale died. Like, he actually died. And I said that if he dies in this finale, I'm going to be really upset about it. And I am really upset about it. He gave the best speech in that echelon briefing. A lot of the stuff that was happening outside and everything. He became, honestly, a really incredible villain there in that scene. And then all of a sudden... Rick Grimes kills him just right there, like that fast. And there was no just like respect for that character. I mean, obviously he's a villain, but there was no just like crazy moment in the scene where you were like, wow, he actually just killed Major General Beale. Like that's actually really insane. Rick immediately is just like, he kills him and then he puts him in that like container or whatever to take him out. And that's it. Like it's so fast. Like there's no thought on, on anything. Like Beale did nothing in this show. Beale is a very disappointing character. People have been talking about Beale for a long time now. At the end of The Walking Dead, there was this whole thing of like, uh, like, like you know what he says or whatever, right? Like there was some kind of talk there. Uh, or maybe that was a, a reference to Okafor. I'm not sure. But there was just a lot of references to Beale over the years and like what the CRM could be and all of that. And again, the CRM is still around. Like they, they are still around. It's just the bad aspects to it that Beale was trying to do. That's what's been removed. But there's a lot of things there. There's a lot of secrets within the CRM. They're, they were testing for walkers. They were doing a lot of that kind of stuff, right? So there is still stuff there that is very like, like, you know, there's, there's still questions on like where they can go now. Yes, people are going to be having more civilian oversight about what they do and all of that. But there is still stuff there. There's people who are going to be upset about what happened. So there's so much more of a story that you're able to tell there, right? But the Civic Republic in general is technically a really good place to live at. But again, that's sort of, that's something I'm also wondering as well. I'm like, where in the final scenes with Rick and Michonne and, and uh, Judith and RJ, where were they? Because they were just in a field. They were sitting in a random field when they reunited. There was so much story there that I want to see. I want to see where they're at who they're talking to and what's going on. I want to see more stuff between, you know, uh, Rick and RJ and just what that, you know, meeting is like. Because I will say, in terms of Rick reuniting with them, like Michonne, when Michonne saw Judith and RJ, it honestly felt so natural. And Judith has grown up a lot. Like she, like I think The Walking Dead, they must have stopped filming at some point in 2021 or early 2022. It's been two years, but like I said, like kids do grow up very, very fast, right? Like for us, two years is nothing. For kids, like growing up two years, you're, you're like, it's a big difference, right? So 
Judith, I noticed, was like noticeably older than just the finale episode there. So I'm questioning where they actually were. But again, Michonne, Judith, and RJ seeing them together was like, okay, we saw this before, so it was nice for them to see each other. When Judith went to go hug Rick, it felt very unnatural and like almost uncomfortable. But I think that's because that's what Rick was feeling. So I like the fact that we felt that in the scene. That was really cool. Rick was just like, I don't know how to feel about this, but this is Judith, like, you know, but there's so much there to get into. I'm like, there's a lot there because things aren't going to be, there's trauma there, right? So yes, this was a happy moment, but there's still so much there to, to be told. And then RJ, obviously, um, you know, he had questions. Like he asked Rick, like, or his dad, he's like, are you, are you the brave man? And then Rick just says, you can call me dad, right? Or first he says, I am, because before he said he wasn't. So now he's actually acknowledging, yeah, I am the brave man, and you can call me dad. So I liked, I liked a lot of that. That was really cool. And again, this moment was always going to be cool. And so I think what this scene just told me, though, was that they need to do a season two. They need to do a season two because I want to see more of these interactions because there's a lot of trauma here with that family. There's a lot of stuff that they can really get into and show us a lot more scenes. Like, yes. Season one focused on, on uh, you know, Rick and Michonne. Season two could focus on the Grimes family and really going through a lot of that because there's so much there. Now Rick is back in Alexandria. I don't know. They were just in a field. And again, that moment there, if you watched during the live stream on Twitch, I did get very emotional because it was very emotional. I couldn't believe what I was watching. It was honestly like, I, I can't believe I'm seeing this. It was it was honestly really incredible, but it did happen too fast. I feel like they kind of ruined the moment there. Like, if I could just be honest, I feel like they kind of ruined that moment. It was so fast. Like, they were just like in the, you know, they just entered the CRM base and everyone believed Rick about what happened. Like, that was the one thing, you know, that I wasn't a fan of overall with The Ones Who Live. And I, I will do an overall review of The Ones Who Live, I guess, at some point this week. But, like, they really, really, like, the CRM, they're not as secretive and all of that as I once thought. Like, they really changed that for this series, I feel like. Because beforehand, they were a lot more secretive than this, where you could not get away with anything with them. Like, if, if you saw them, you're pretty much dead because they had to get rid of you because they didn't want you to know of their existence. There was just so much stuff there that was built up with the CRM that was just like taken away here. So much that they could have got into. And I do wonder if it was the focus more on Rick and Michonne that got rid of a lot of it. You know, and as much as I do like this, cool. I just, I didn't want Beale or the CRM to be gone. That was like my biggest concern about all this was that I didn't want the CRM and Rick to be, or not Rick, but the CRM and Beale to be gone. Uh, the CRM is still there. There's still some parts there where they can definitely do a season two. It's still like, there is still that opportunity there. There would be a newer story, which would be exciting because it's going to be something unpredictable. There's going to be a different place to go there. And you can definitely add the emotional element there because of Judith and RJ and just what, what do you do there, right? But now it just depends on everyone else because the ratings for the show were really amazing. People are really, really liking this. And so are they doing a season two? Are they about to announce that? We'll have to wait and see. We're not going to know right now. There was nothing in the episode Insider that sort of, you know, they didn't say anything in the episode Insider that this was the end. They didn't say anything about like whatever. They just said they were just explaining the moments. Like this was so cool, this and that. And so now we just got to wait and see what happens next, basically. And that's sort of the place we're in, you know. And uh, I, I have a hard time believing that that was the end of Rick and Michonne. To me, if that's the end of Rick and Michonne, that is very disappointing. And um, and that's why for me, if I had to rate the episode anything, it's going to be a 5 out of 10. For me personally, I would rate it a 5 out of 10 because it was rushed. It was so, so rushed. Like, I uh, I don't know. I just, I really, I thought that certain things at least wouldn't happen. But it was like, no, that happened. They rushed through so much of it. And it was just like, I couldn't process anything of what was happening. So, and yeah, if I had to do a ranking of this episode, I would have to say it's a 5 out of 10 overall. A ranking of this series overall, I would have to give it a 7 or 8 out of 10. I think that the ending really hurt a lot of the direction of this series here. Um, it doesn't mean that, like, again, and it just, it's only because of the CRM part. But if the next part of the story, like, like... If they were to announce a season two tomorrow, would, would that affect my rating of the episode? It would affect it a little bit in terms of, uh, like, certain aspects to it. 
but it was still very rushed. It was still like really crazy rushed. I I really was not a fan of that. And also just like the way everything ends, there was no like I felt like it was kind of a, a lazy way to do it because after they destroy all the chlorine gas and all that in that one area, then you hear the radio and stuff talking, and it's like this whole thing of like this is what happened to the CRM base, the Cascadia base, this and that, whatever. And then it basically sort of recaps the events of what happened. And it's like, now this thing happened and on all of that. And you're like understanding it all. And you're like, oh, okay. So all of that was fixed or they, they did this and that. And then all of a sudden Rick and Michonne are in the helicopter and then they land. And it's not, you don't even see them landing. Like it cuts to them in the helicopter. They're looking at the phone. Rick's like, his hand is shaking a little bit. Like he's nervous, which is like, I, I love those details. But immediately they cut to like the helicopter's already on the ground. You see them walking out, and then they all see each other and run to each other, and then the scene lasts about two minutes, and then all of a sudden it's, it's starting to pull away. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that at all. It was very rushed. Like, the episode's like 45 to 47 minutes or something like that. I think there was a way better way in telling this story. You know, like, that reunion with them, as, as, as amazing as that scene was, the reunion in episode one with Rick and Michonne was so well done, because in episode two, you saw them reacting and talking about a bunch of stuff. So that was amazing. But again, it's like like episode three, they escaped. Um, and then, you know, episode four, they, you know, they had their moment and all of that, which was amazing. Episode five, they were still gone. They were going back home. And then all of a sudden they were like, oh, wait, before we go back home, we need to destroy evidence that we're or just where we're from and all that. So they go back to the Cascadia base and they wipe everything out and then leave. Like, I, I know the line in all of this is like Rick and Michonne can do anything. I find that so silly, though. Like, that's that's honestly the way I feel is I think Daryl Dixon is a much better show. Daryl Dixon season one, I think, was a much better show than The Ones Who Live, which is is kind of I, I can't believe I'm even saying that. But. If you just look at the last two episodes of episode five and six, it was so, so good. So amazing. Like all the variant Walker stuff and then where episode six ends off and all the visuals of everything. That ending felt like a real ending. There was so much personal stuff there where the story felt so continuous. No time jumps to here and here and here. It didn't feel rushed at all. It was an actual like really epic story being told. Daryl, you know, learning of his grandfather and, and like everything there. And then you had, Carol show up at the end. It was just so, so perfect. Like, so perfectly well done. This story here told Rick and Michonne's story. And yes, there can still be more story to be told because obviously you want to reunite Daryl and Rick. I just worry about how this was done that in the future, if they ever reunite, that it's going to be told in the same way. So we'll have to wait and see where this is going to go. But my prediction is that, no, they're not going to confirm a season two tomorrow night. They're going to be asked about a season two. And they'll say, well, anything is possible, this and that. They're going to ask Denai Guerrero and Andrew Lincoln, you know, uh, like, would you do a season two? And they're going to say, you know, I'm open. And I'm all about ideas and everything. And I think that's basically going to be it. And then maybe we find out something at Comic-Con once they've actually planned and, and worked something out, like a story and everything. So I'm hoping that's not the case. I, you know, because I feel like they are going to come back. There's no way Rick and Michonne's story ended there. There's a lot of story here left to tell, but again, I just, I was disappointed with it. So there's not really a lot more I can say. So I will just, I'll leave it here tomorrow. I'll do an episode breakdown of everything. There was a lot of information here that we learned about the Echelon briefing and in terms of what Beale sort of understood about a lot of things, because he talked about the world ending within 14 years and all of that. So some really interesting stuff there, because you have to wonder if Beale was right. Rick automatically assumes that he's wrong, but I'm just like... That's a, that was a big assumption, because what if he's actually right? Like, um, man, so yeah, I'm interested in where the story could go. Again, they, they, they did leave the door open for a continuation of that story. There are a lot of little things where you can kind of go there and here and there for sure. So if they wanted to do a season two, it would be a different season two than we thought. But um, that's sort of where we're at right now. We're just going to have to wait and see. So I'm going to leave it here. Post your thoughts down below. I might be the only one. Maybe I'm the only one who didn't like the episode. And if that's the case. That is totally fine. This is just my opinion. Uh, post your opinion. If you really liked it, then that is really awesome. I'm so happy that you really liked it. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.